Hey there, Vinyl Community. So um, today it's pretty cold here in uh, pretty cold here in Michigan today, Southeast Michigan. Damn. Staying in for the most part and uh, staying warm. Listening to a little music, kind of been on a little uh, folk adventure, I guess you'd call it. Um, it's part of you know you know, under a curated part of my collection. Um, you know, I know what I like when I hear it. And, uh, but I'm, I'm no expert in the area of folk music. And I never really went in for kind of the, I know it's popular, the whole English folk, you know, Canterbury scene it was never my scene. So, uh, I don't have too much of that, although... Uh, there is one exception to that, too. Um, listening to you right now. Hold on a minute. It's a reissue, 1976. It's kind of um, Turkish. Um, it's a really amazing record. If you're not familiar with it. Uh, from 76. This is probably uh, one of the preeminent uh, folk uh, band that mixes kind of um, traditional Turkish folk music with um, a little bit of uh, Western influence and then a little bit of, uh, um, um, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, psychedelic stuff, um, but different than a lot of um, music that, you know, I, uh, Western audiences are used to hearing from, uh, you know, Turkish psych, or uh, which is really good, um, but this is a this is a really cool record. Probably my favorite of the records that I'm familiar with from uh, that come from that that whole that whole scene. Really beautiful record, all instrumental, and um, you know they did a real they did they do some real nice uh, reissues. Um, if you haven't explored. Uh, Turkish music a little bit. Uh, it's highly recommended. Some amazing stuff there to find. So that's what we're listening to. And uh, what I thought I'd do is I pulled out my whole, well not my whole folk section. Some things I've already shown a little bit, so I won't re-show them. But just a few things. Nothing to um, get rid of the more familiar stuff right away. Uh, probably my favorite people talk a lot about you know english folk the whole you know fairport convention and i never went too too much in for any of that but there's one exception and that would be uh sandy denny and this album in particular which i really really like a lot i like sandy denny's voice i think she had a amazingly haunting aspect to her uh to her music and I think she brought up there's a word that I won't use but I want to use but I'm not gonna because I don't like it should I say the word anyway there's she brings a certain otherworldliness to to her recordings now what the hell is that word supposed to mean you know but there's a certain haunted aspect to it and a certain tragedy that just runs through everything that she touches um, yeah amazing vocalist and uh, this North Star Grassman and the Raven um, this is an album I found I, I actually found out about there used to be a girl who lived on my block who uh, kind of this hippie girl who used to come over she's a friend of the family and and I remember she came over one day and and uh, played this record for me she was always trying to turn me on to <clears throat> new music and it was usually it was usually stuff I just wasn't into like you know Crosby Steals and Nash or something like that but I remember sitting in my room and on my little record player that I had sitting on my bed she's a few years older than me <coughs> and playing this record and uh, Good memories and a uh, record that has ever since then always stuck with me and always been part of my my collection. Um, and then 
Um, and that's my favorite, Denny. But the only I also like this first album that she did, the first solo album. It's got Listen, Listen on it. Um, it's just full of um, really similar vibe to that um, North Star Grass Man. Um, I, I don't think it's quite as good. It doesn't have that same um, sense of control and, and, uh, and the direction that Sandy, I wish she had gone even deeper into that dark. Almost, almost on North Star Grass Man, there's almost a gothic feel to it. And, and she touches on that here, too, a little bit. But on the other one, she gets into it more. And then, unfortunately, I think she backpedaled a little bit and uh, and tried to make her stuff a little more commercially vi viable. Not that there's probably not other worthwhile songs in her catalog. And then I guess along that same line, I think I might have showed this before, but it's such a good record that I'll show it again. I got this um, around the time of Record Store Day. This is uh, Pink Moon. This is, uh, I think, the third British pressing of it. No gatefold on it, but I was pretty glad to score it anyway. Uh, sounds Dynamite. Beautiful record. And, uh, yeah, there's no arguing with Nick Drake and, uh, and how good this is. So, like I said, I think I showed that before. Here's a record that... Um, I've had back, this kind of came when I was like really into like industrial music in the um, like the 80s, like uh, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, here's a record that um, kind of came on my radar back then. And then I remember um, about a year ago or so, um, Stunty I think played this on his, his, uh, um, his live stream. And it reminded me of what a wonderful band Psychic TV is, and what a great, beautiful record this is. You know, you, you talk about, you know, folky and gothic and, um, you know, haunted. All of that is incorporated in, in different ways throughout this, also with a wild streak of creativity and a uh, willingness to go in a lot of different places. Yeah, Psychic TV was a great band. Very, very, I think, underrated. And you just don't hear that many people talk about them. I was really surprised when, when Stunty played it on his live stream because you just don't hear that many people, um, you know, touting this really terrific, really terrific band. Um, okay, then we'll flash back to something a little more straightforward. I'm not a big... Terry Reed fan. I've heard some of his stuff and it's all pretty good, but the only album that I've really ever loved by him is this one, River. Uh, I like everything about it. I love the cover. I think it's really cool. The music has a nice freeform, folky vibe about it. Kind of hippie-ish, I guess but in the best sense of that word, rather than in how I might normally use it. Um, yeah, there's a cool breeziness to it, of good times ahead, um, a contemplation, an optimism. Yeah, pretty cool record. And uh, one that I probably don't listen to that often, but you know, once or twice a year when I do put this on, it never fails to hit the spot. Yeah, pretty cool record. This used to be really cheap at one time. I think I have a feeling that the the prices on on this have gone up because it's a, it's such a good record. You know, it's like one of those records that you know you get it and it was like fifteen bucks or twenty bucks and you felt like it should have been a hundred dollar record. Um, maybe it is a hundred dollar record now. I don't know. I hope not. Um, Next was, um, I've seen a few people show this, and uh, it's a great, it's a great record. This is a, a reissue of the Red Hash album. Yeah, you talk about like, you know, haunted folk, um, with a nice drugged out vibe to it too, you know. Yeah, this is the kind of music that, um, indeed, I can see why they called it Red Hash, because you know, this this makes you wanna 
even if you if you don't indulge um, this would make you want to so uh, yeah this is um this is on Tragic City and I, if I'm not mistaken I think there's a 45 that came along with this pressing to it and I have it over in my 45s but I should probably keep it with the record yeah cool record uh, this has become increasingly difficult to track down I remember when it first came out it got pretty uh, rave reviews at the time and and um, I think it disappeared fairly quickly um, although I, I do remember occasionally seeing it in the stores but I haven't in, in years now great record and uh, worth checking out yeah I, I'm, I think Stunty showed that and I think there's a few other uh, folks um, that have showed it too maybe Fred Big Star um, showed it too and there could be some other people too I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly um, Ted Lucas uh, this is a Michigan folk singer has that is this record goes well with the Red Hash record as far as I'm concerned um, I actually this is a reissue and I think this came with a 45 too um, pretty sure it did it's probably over in my I should have grabbed those sorry I didn't um, originals of this you know that used to be that um, I used to one of my locals used to have uh, a copy of this in their on their wall and in their store for it was there for ages and you ever had this happen and I went there with the cash in my pocket I think it was about 75 bucks something like that for a nice condition original and it had been on the wall for a year longer and I had looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and thought I'm pulling the trigger and I went there to get it and I could I walked in and it was gone and I went over to the counter they know me a little bit there and I said what happened to the Ted Lucas album and they go somebody was here a few days ago and bought it and so at the time even the reissue this reissue was tough to get they've since done another reissue Maybe that reissue is the one that came with the 45. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, at the time, and then I, I just happened to luck out and went to a record show and somebody had this. I think it was $25 or something. And, uh, and I just grabbed it because I was like, I, this, this record's got to be in my collection. Cool, breezy, um, folk music. Um, very, very nice, very sincere. It goes real well with that Red Hash record, I think. And um, if you're not familiar with Ted Lucas and you at all like acoustic music, you know, how a record like this isn't very well known and James Taylor is, you know, everywhere. I, anyway, uh, yeah, good record. And if you have a, an original, speaking of originals that would be cool to have, this is another record that I... Um, um, I've never seen an original of this, but I yeah, I think even this reissue has become a little bit tough to find. This is the uh, you know Skip Spencer album, uh, or and yeah, this is a pretty wild record. Um, I'm not a, a big fan of of uh, the the band that he uh, came from and and that whole scene, but. This is a really special record, and I don't care what you know period it came from, and if you call him a hippie or not. Um, this is a you know very very willing to take a lot of chances and break a lot of rules to make the record that he wanted to. And if you don't, I mean, if you don't know the, the story of um, Skip, Skip Spencer, it's worth reading a little bit about him. You know, he was. Uh, it's said that he suffered from mental illness and uh, that that can be heard on this record. You hear that over and over again. And I, you know, I, I think that's really unfair. I've always thought that was unfair, even like with Sid Barrett. When I think those two Sid Barrett solo records are are great. In fact, I should show I should show that because that kind of goes in with the rest of this music. Those Sid Barrett, Barrett records are fantastic, and um, and they they try to 
say that he was, you know, I, I don't know whether the man was suffering from what he was suffering from, but I do know that he made a couple of great records, as did Skip Spencer. Better records than a whole lot of people who, um, um, who, who, who look on judgment um, uh, with people who, who struggle with, uh, with an Ill, one, illness, one illness or the other. So um, I don't like to judge people on that, but this is a great record. And uh, yeah, while well, we're tracking down, this is uh, this reissue was the yeah, was the music on vinyl reissue, but I think that's gone. And I, God, I don't know if they did another reissue or not. I don't remember them doing one. This sounds great and uh, has all the tracks on it, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Although I, it'd be great to have an original. And then here's two more. I'll show these real quick because I don't think that. You know, we all know this story by now. Uh, they made a documentary out of these two records. This is a, these are the uh, the two Light in the Attic reissues they did um, back, like, um, before COVID. And uh, these are really great records. Uh, this guy, um, it, it, this is from the Detroit area, and um, I had friends who told me stories um, um, about seeing... Um, um, a guy walking around the neighborhood with a guitar wrapped around his back and uh, working in an auto plant and uh, yeah um, made two records and then vanished and, um, and then all of a sudden uh, when uh, when Sugar Man the, the track Sugar Man that's on here started to get played in clubs in, in the UK and then all around the world and uh, all of a sudden he found himself thrust into kind of a international international fame. Both worth tracking down. Um, I think there's a new reissue, reissue, reissue out. I have no idea what it sounds like. But these are really solid records. Very, very good. Easy to love. Uh, folk, folkish music uh, record. And, um, oh, here's one more. I, I don't know if you'd call this folk or not, but I always really like this record. Horace had um, vocalist, um, did this uh, did this record and um, this has uh, talk about a haunted vibe on a record um, I'll t I, I, I would probably take this over any of the Porous Head records um, Beth Gibson's a, a really amazing vocalist and she really shows it on this record to me and these are these are tales that seem like they could have come from, you know, hundreds of years ago. Melodies that were seemed to be brought back from the dead. Great record, and uh, you know, it got a little bit of attention when it first came out, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about it anymore. I still think it's a great record. So um, I guess we'll save the Sid Barrett records for for another time, although. They're certainly worth mentioning. Um, I think they're both fantastic and uh, almost better than any Pink Floyd record as far as I'm concerned. Although I like the first part of um, Pink Floyd's career. You know, I, everything through, you know, like maybe metal or so. But um, yeah, when Sid was in the band, yeah, great stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, kind of a little bit of folk music there. And I uh, hope everyone's doing all right for the weekend and going to have a great week. And uh, thanks for watching.